Hey, Pierce family, hopefully you all are doing well. This is Mr. Smith. Hopefully you are having a, a great day so far. Um, should be Friday when you watch this video, but anything is possible. Uh, I just want to share a few things with you um, as we uh, continue going through this school year. Uh, as you know, we've had a lot of things going on and we've had a lot of great things. Um, students are doing great. Uh, there's a lot of great teaching and learning taking place, um, but there's always room for improvement. As you know, I always believe in uh, improving continuously uh, and everyone on our staff does as well. So um, over time, we've noticed a trend uh, of uh, various forms of disengagement, which means you're not really fully paying attention uh, or you're not fully grasping uh, what's going on while you're in class. Uh, and sometimes uh, you're distracted. Uh, sometimes you're distracted from your phone. Uh, it could be your parent texting you or you texting your parent or some things going on in the building and you got to figure out what's going on. So you take a sneak at your phone or someone sends you something or you get some notifications. Uh, we all get notifications, trust me. I get distracted by them as well sometimes. Um, but there, there is a way to do it and to check it at the appropriate times. Uh, many of you received phones when you were uh, in elementary. Um, when I was in elementary school, cell phones didn't exist, if that tells you anything. Um, but uh, uh, if, if I did have a cell phone, I would have been distracted just like you are, especially with the capabilities of phones nowadays. So uh, what we want to do is provide a safe learning environment, a healthy learning environment, and a place where you can be fully engaged in your learning while in school all day. So we have this new program, it's called Yonder. Uh, they are um, pouches uh, for your cell phone, your smartwatch, and your personal, uh, any other uh, electronic devices, your earbuds, all of that can go in this pouch here. And uh, uh, I'd like to explain that to you. Uh, hopefully you're ready. It's a brief presentation. So here we go. All right. So we have yonder pouches. So here we go with our presentation. So we have Yonder here. Um, as you know, this year has always been a phone-free, our phone has been a phone-free school zone, uh, a phone-free zone um, for years. Uh, but as time has gone by, we've become more and more lenient and more accepting of phones uh, on our students for a variety of reasons. Uh, many times students feel uh, that they need to have their phone one, uh, most of the time, parents tell their child they want their child to have the phone on them in case of an emergency. And we totally understand that, which is why we allow you to carry your phones. Uh, unfortunately, students um, don't always are not always responsible, and it's best and easiest to do something across the board uh, for every student. And we have processes in place here uh, in case of an emergency. Um, uh, so... Uh, this school year, the rest of the school year, next school year, and for the unseeable future, um, our school will be a phone-free space. Uh, you'll be required to use your pouch uh, while you're in school, and we'll talk about when and how that process goes um, as we go through this presentation. So uh, we're going to talk about how we're spending our time, uh, why do we spend so much time on our phones, and who really wants a phone free space. I know most of you don't want one, but it's best for us. So as an adult, um, we spend a lot of time on our phones as adults. Fo adults tend to spend about uh, five five hours a day on, on their phones. That's a lot of time to be on a cell phone. So five hours a day, adults are on their phones. Um, and it's for a variety of reasons. Teenagers, students your age, uh, how much time do you think you spend on phone? seven, eight, nine, 10 hours. Teenagers on average spend over seven hours on their cell phones. That's a long time. That's almost a full work day uh, for most people. So if that tells you anything, um, hopefully you understand that that's a lot of time to be on the phone, to be disconnected uh, from reality, which in many times it is. Um, so with seven and a half hours or seven plus hours uh, on your phone, uh, how much time do you think that equates in a full lifetime? Let's say you live 75 years. 
let's say you live 75 years, that means for 22 years, you are on your phone. <laughs> That's a long time to be on the phone, uh, 22 years. Research says that you could tra literally travel to Mars and back for being on your phone seven plus hours every day. Now, you can travel to Mars and back 38 times. That's, that's, that's amazing. So the next thing is, why do we spend so much time on our phones? Why do we spend so much time on our phones? Um, many times we want to be on our phones for a variety of reasons. One, uh, social media. That's, that's understandable. We want to be on our phone to see what's going on in the world with our friends. Uh, you want to see what's going on in the, in the Instagram group chat. You want to see what's going on on TikTok. Um, and it's very captivating. And that's how the uh, social media giants created it. They created it for it to catch your eye and, and to be captivating and make you want to continue uh, to scroll and to see what's going on. Uh, the algorithms are amazing. When you say something to your friends or to someone in your family, next thing you know, you have uh, an ad or something in your social media uh, page related to those items. Or if you're searching up stuff on your phone, I remember when I was looking for a house uh, a couple years ago, all the ads on my on my um, Facebook pages, they were all ads for new homes. And they were all for ads for new homes in the areas that I was looking in, which was even crazier. Um, so it knew exactly uh, what I was doing in my life, uh, which is really weird. Um, but uh, a lot of you are on social media. A lot of you are texting family and friends. Um, and there's a time and place for that. Uh, but it just does not have to take place while at school. Um, so do you think social media uh, affects the way you feel? What do you think? Um, internally, you have to know that it affects the way you feel. Um, I've, I've not been on social media really for uh, all of January and into February. And my personal life has been amazing. Like I, I feel much more at peace. I don't compare myself to friends and uh, other family members. And uh, I do feel a little disconnected at times, but then I just sit and I enjoy what my family's doing and what my life is about. And uh, it's best for me. So every once in a while, I might get back onto social media, but it won't take up uh, a big chunk of my day, which is what it does for uh, many of our uh, students. It does that for many of our staff, especially when they're out of school, out of the building or at home or after school. A lot of people are posting and watching and seeing things on social media, but that doesn't mean it has to take up all of your day. So I'd like to share with you this video um, about Yonder, and then we'll talk a little bit about more what Yonder is going to look like here at Pierce. Today, 95% of teens have access to a smartphone and 45% self-report that they're online almost constantly. Smartphones have penetrated all aspects of daily life, but of special concern to educators is their prevalence in schools. The average kid gets their first smartphone at age 10. That's fifth grade. Most will open their first social media account within the next few years. But some schools are beginning to question the wisdom of allowing kids to enter the classroom with tiny computers and social networks in their pockets. These concerns, along with a general annoyance at phone gazing concert goers, led 32 year old Graham Dugoni to build a device called Yonder. Users drop their phone in, the pouch locks, and can only be reopened with a large magnet. So you come in through the door, and you open the pouch. We get our phone out, make sure it's powered off, on airplane mode, all that. Put your phone inside, and you close it, and throughout the day, you can't open it. For me at first, uh, I didn't really like it. Coach? Seriously? I barely came to the school. They just started doing a yarnder thing. And I was like, oh my, why, <laughs> why? Everyone was realizing that they weren't actually getting any work done and like their schoolwork was like declining because of the phone usage. So this is phone usage per day before yonder. How many messages did you get? How many times did you check social media? How many hours did you spend on your phone? How would you describe these numbers? Big, surprising. Excessive. Um, a little 
too much. I remember like sophomore year, I tried to get my followers up like every day, just check my followers constantly. You're just constantly comparing yourself to other women on your feed and it definitely takes a toll on your self image. I got more focused and worried. Um, my grades went up. I was sitting alone and I saw this other kid across from me who was also sitting alone and can't pull out my phone. <laughs> so I went up to them and I introduced myself and I actually met someone new. Three days later, I was just like, what are we learning today? Because I, I can't even open it. <laughs> Less distracted and honestly happier kind of because they're not worrying about what's going on in social media. Interacting way more. Like, instead of being on their phones and have their earbuds in and not interacting with people, a lot of people are interacting with people, getting to know other people. The atmosphere seem more positive. Yeah, I'm always used to having it right here and not having it for eight hours throughout the day. It, it changes. It changes you. Amazing moment happened with him and then everybody who was there all pulled out their phones and were filming the moment. But nobody was in the moment. Everyone was documenting the moment. You right. want a break from your phone. You right. don't even realize it. Right. You know, you want a break. Grown, responsible, disciplined adults have a hard time watching a comedy show without the distraction of the phone. We all need the break just from that technology. Just for a minute. Good show tonight. Let's go. Baby. Let's go. Baby. So that'll, that, that gives us a little bit of information about what's going on uh, with Yonder and why uh, we're going to use it. So let's go back and talk a little bit more about what Yonder is going to look like here at Pierce. All right. So let's finish up this piece here and we'll talk about what school is going to look like uh, every day starting on Monday, uh, Monday, February 13th. So you're going to come to school. Um, you're going to arrive to school. Uh, on Monday, you're going to go directly to your advisory class um, and you're going to get your pouch. Um, let me stop sharing real quick. You're going to come to your advisory class. You're going to get your pouch because on Friday, you're watching this video. And on Monday, you're going to get your pouch in your advisory class. Pouches look like this. You're going to get your pouch. You're going to either power off your phone or you're going to uh, put it in um, airplane mode. I just powered mine off. See, powering off. Uh, you're going to slide it in. You put your AirPods in there. Um, if you have any type of uh, Bluetooth earbud devices, uh, you can put those in there. I thought I brought mine with me. Yeah, I got mine. Put those in there as well. They fit in there. You put your smartwatch in there because that's another personal electronic device, right? This isn't a smartwatch. It's just a regular watch. Put that in there. And the thing is, you want to put your phone on airplane mode or um, put it or power it off because your phone will continue to try to find a signal all day and it'll work super hard. And when your phone is free, when you need to have access to your phone, then your phone will be dead. So make sure you turn your phone off or put it in airplane mode and then you're gonna lock it, right? So it's locked, can't open it up. It's locked by pressing this button. Um, so you're gonna do that and you're gonna put it in there and all day, you can hold on to this all day as long as you want to. I don't care, um, but make sure you put your name on it because you wanna make sure you have your device. So on Friday, uh, when you're watching this video, um, on Monday, you wanna make sure when you get your pouch, uh, on Monday morning, you put your name on your device. Um, at the end of the day, um, you all have seen these big old circles around the building. Um, at the end of the day, at the very end of the day, or if you leave school early, or if there's an emergency and you need to get to your phone so you can call home or something like that, uh, you're gonna to go to these magnet, uh, these magnet discs and you're going to unlock your phone um, and then you'll be able to go to go home and that's it all right it's real simple all right so real quick I'm going to show you how to uh, so once again when you arrive at school you're going to bring your pouch to school so you're going to bring your pouch to school on Monday you're going to get your pouch you're going to put your name on it, put your put your uh, phone, all your personal electronic devices in your pouch. Uh, you're going to lock your pouch. 
um, and carry it around all day. Make sure your name is on it. Then at the end of the day, you're going to unlock your pouch and keep your pouch with you. And you're going to go to and from school with your pouch every day. Um, you don't need to turn your pouch in. Just keep your pouch with you, put it in your backpack. And when you get to school, you're going to put your uh, phone in your pouch and then um, you'll be free to um, go about your school day after that. Last thing, um, uh, just some basic rules. Do not try to pull, pry, or damage the pouch in any way. Um, the pouches will check and make sure your pouches are functioning properly uh, throughout the school year. It is your responsibility uh, to have your pouch at all times. Um, if you lose your pouch, um, we'll get to that. So all earbuds, smart watches, and, and your phone must be kept off and in the pouch. Uh, the personal electronic device policy, it remains the same. Remember, if it's seen, your phone is seen, or your personal electronic devices are seen outside of the pouch during the school day, it'll be confiscated, taken to the front office, and your parent picks it up. Uh, the first couple of times your parent pick it up, the third time, uh, it'll be a conversation with Mr. Hall or myself or Mr. Williams and there will be uh, additional consequences on top of it being confiscated. Um, and then the last thing is if you forgot your pouch, uh, then you need to just go to the counseling office, turn in your pouch, it'll be uh, put away in a safe place, and then you can pick up your uh, phone. If you get your pouch, go to the counseling office and then you can pick it up at the end of the school day. And that's about it. Um, it's plain and simple, real easy. Come to school, right? You come to school, put your phone and other items in your pouch, you lock it up, and you can carry this thing all day. You can take this everywhere in the building if you like. Uh, at the end of the day, or in case of emergency, or for students that have uh, medical reasons, there's a whole different piece to that. Uh, but students, uh, all students will have these locked away. If you need to use a phone, if you want to use your cell phone, then you go down to the counseling office and ask to use your cell phone. Um, and they will unlock it for you. Uh, if, if there's a reason why you need your phone, go down to the counseling office and they can unlock it for you. It's real easy to unlock, right? It goes in this magnet and then, you know, it pushes and then uh, you're able to get access to your phone. It's real easy, all right? Hopefully you guys are great. It's gonna be an amazing day. And always remember to fly high, Eagles. <laughs>